Uh, check one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. Let's not waste any time, right? Like, you know what's up. If you're returning from the previous stream, we're playing this 3DO Doom thing. Uh, we're into episode two now. Tell your friends. And unlike in, uh, PC Doom, you know, politically correct Doom, am I right? <laughs> uh, this, there is, there are no real episodes, as it were, in 3DO Doom, or in Jaguar Doom, or in any of the derivatives thereof. So, uh, this is just level 9 as far as the game is concerned. And also, we haven't lost our guns, we have not lost our arsenal. The only way that'll happen is if we die, which, you know, unlikely. Especially if I cheat. Uh, but, yeah, it's a bit of a structural change. Don't know why necessarily that was made. I don't know why they necessarily upended the episode structure either, for that matter. Just went with a straightforward level counter in the bottom right corner, but... That was a Carmack call for Jaguar Doom, for consoleizing Doom, and it's the tradition that everything else followed in. But yeah, look at this. This is this would be for a pistol start, right? You put a shotgun right in the critical path. And yes, we are still playing at full screen resolution. So we're getting nothing but the best performance out of this right now. You know, GTX 3080, whatever, eat your heart out. 3D was the true powerhouse of the 64-bit era. True 64-bit. Some joke, something along those lines. There, there's legs to that riff. Someone can do something with that. Probably not. Right, time for the worst switch in all of Doom. Still intact. This is such a beginner's fucking trap. You turn around, oh, switch. But also, switch. So easy to miss one and not the other. I think this switch opens a door up there, which you'll get to later, but then the one on the other side obviously opens these up, which you'll need now to get the key card. Definitely lighter on the attendance today. Uh, <laughs> maybe give it time. I'll keep going either way just because I want to get this archived and up on YouTube in some capacity. And just so I have the footage on hand too. I fell for the trap here, by the way. Another thing I should notice uh, or note in this version of Doom, and Jaguar version of Doom, and so forth, is that there's no crushing walls, no crushing ceilings. So, that landing on you won't hurt you, won't hurt the enemies. I imagine you made one level in Doom 2 in particular, uh... Bit of a rough one to port, when the time came for that. No siree, Bob. I do not like my feet toasted so much. And for those who don't know, uh, because it's one of the less memorable power-ups of Doom, that little boxy computer thing we picked up is the auto map. It fills out the map for you. If anything, it's kind of a deficit, because for me, I want to know where I've already been on a map. So just having the entire map available to me is not necessarily uh, super useful to me. If anything, it confuses me a bit. And I believe that is the first Capo Demon. And uh, luckily I have just a thing for that. Wait, did I go the wrong way? Did I get turned around? Wait, no. Uh, I think I go backwards here. Right. 
and I think something is open that wasn't previously. Am I remembering this map correctly at all? No, probably not, huh? Because I don't think they would have to go back to the very beginning of the level. Hmm. But I think there is some secret that requires backtracking to some capacity. Oh, no, never mind. I, I did have it right. Dead to rights. You know, people will talk up Doom Shotgun, and rightfully so. But, you know, this chain gun, it does its damn job. It does it admirably. Is this the first energy pack you can pick up? Which uh, foretells the... Plasma Rifle coming soon. And the BFG a little further down the line. Oh, well, sure enough, there it is. Just unceremoniously plopped into the corner. Which does mean this whole thing was a secret just to get this, but, uh... You know, new gun. I'll take it. I'll take it happily, I'll take it readily. Wait, no. Wait, yes? No? This way? This way. A lot of hurt tiles in this map. Now what I think I'm actually supposed to do in this instance is the room that had the Kako Demon. Up here... Flip switch. See, now we're cooking with gas. And easy peasy map. See, we'll blitz right through this episode. Oh, wait, this map? Yeah, I was actually aware of this, and I kind of knew that this is where we would come to a grinding halt. Doom's box maze level. Because the other stuff with the fire and the brimstone and, you know, all that was a little too cool, so let's slow it down a little bit with a Deimos warehouse that we're made to navigate through. And don't ask me to find a single fucking secret in this level, because uh, I could not tell you where they are. Does it take two Berserk Pack Punches to kill an imp? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. Oh no, we got him on one that time. Yeah, you know what? Um, it's occurring to me that uh, trying to use fists uh, at this frame rate is, is a bit too dicey of a prospect. And I do believe there's stuff spawned in behind me now. Or at least one in. That slipped past me. We did skip a door. Probably better to clear this out now than later. Uh, Doom at the stream rate in general is dicey. That's a fair assessment. Tell you what, let's, uh... Give me a little bit of breathing room. Let's play it at the resolution it was intended to be played at. I use that word generously. Or uh, with a lot of quotation marks, whichever one works better. Oh, little boxes. I think it's like... There we go. You know what thing that's uh, missing from this version of Doom? Uh, indications for when you pick up items. Uh, text message indications in the uh, in the top of the screen. I wonder why that is. I guess they just trust you to trust your own senses when it comes to what you're picking up, or maybe processing that was just a uh, a bridge too far. 
for Jaguar Doom and or 3DO Doom. Uh, I'm trying to remember which way to go. Despite not liking this map, I've certainly played it enough times in my life. I am thinking about what to play next if I continue to do these semi-impromptu streams. I mean, yesterday was a proper impromptu one with no warning. I did give y'all 12 hours or so uh, notice in this scenario and in the case of this stream. Somehow we're doing worse numbers. <laughs> Not that I really care one way or the other. It's just of interest. It's just novel to me. Something about Tuesdays. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Why did I even go out of my way to get that? Dumbass two health. Really need to top off. It's that two health that'll uh, make or break me. Fell for the trap. Now, is there a way to lower those though so I can get that backpack back? Yes. But I think that one is just a closet trap. In fact, I think both of these are closet traps. Isn't that cute? Now, what enemies are we facing here? Was there a Baron in this closet? No, just a picky. Okay. It's all coming back to me. Slowly but surely. The maps I've tried to put out of my memory. Peekaboo, I see you. Yes, backpack please. Cause that'll top off a little bit of everything we have. I should do a quick inventory check. 180, 15... <laughs> nice. It's the weed number in ammo. Alright, so this has not been explored yet. That will require blue. We're piecing it together. How's the soundtrack treating y'all so far? The the pedophile composed soundtrack. I mean, Randy Scott composed soundtrack. He wasn't a pedophile yet, as far as anyone knew. Uh, do I even need to bother with that? that orb there, bringing that sphere down. I say not. I say let's just truck along. 100 health will get me where I need to go. That's that speaking of getting where I need to go. I saw a little bit of monster infighting there. Could have just let that play out, but... I also don't care enough to try and conserve ammo. Truth be told. Now, I think we're gonna finish this level without seeing what that yellow door even unlocked. I know it's not the BFG, so therefore I don't really care about whatever that secret is. Again... I do my best to put this map out of memory. Oh wait, no, we can't do it just yet, can we? No, son of a bitch. Unless there's... <laughs> no. It's not, the elevator's not quite there for me to speed strafe onto there, so... The show must go on. 
I will also say, uh, the, the reminder I give on every stream, the disclaimer I give, that if anyone has any questions about any game, if this game here is not of particular interest to you, but you just, you love the sound of my voice so goddamn much, uh, feel free to ask questions about, you know, any sort of bad game. Nothing's off limits. I just realized I was moving my character and not, uh, just the map. There's some button you need to press additionally to, uh, to get that working. Okay. For those who don't know what the plasma gun looks like, uh, you're very welcome. I know there was some genuine want to see uh, a give effect on the HUDs up display that is not present in other versions of Doom, I was more than happy to showcase that in the last episode. I feel like I've gone around in a fucking circle. Well, that's because I have. And that, that will do it. That will give you that, uh, that uncanny realization. Okay, blue. I think with the red key card, I think I can... Well, let's check this way. Can you tell why I dislike this level? Uh, levels that are... Okay, so landmarks. Is, is a term I use a lot. A signposting. These are these are very important terms when it comes to game design. Uh, and John Romero is uh, the king of it, is, is a big believer in it. Uh, so that is why when you get a map like this that shows up in the pack, which uh, someone else if someone else wants to check for me, I'm busy dooming over here, uh, but to see who designed this map in particular, who's to blame, I think the yellow door is... Ooh, I hate... Just the way that map key is bound. Now, that's the beginning of the level. Right. Is there maybe a door here from... Oh, yeah, okay. I guess we're gonna see what the yellow key unlocks after all. And it's a pedestal to the chain gun, a monument to a weapon that we're uh, currently shooting right now, as a matter of fact. Isn't that a happy coincidence? You know, never say no to ammo. And you know, for those of you who are, you know, taking, scribbling notes furiously right now for this game that, you know, clearly hasn't been documented at all, I mean, where else are you going to find a map for Doom in this day and age? Albeit, this is the 3DO version. Maps are slightly different for whatever that is worth. I think when it comes to these levels, these sorts of levels, uh, that are just, like, simplified geometry, they're intact enough, you can generally navigate by instinct, do them blindfolded if you have that map knowledge inherent to you, but... Then there are others that are straight out, uh, straight up swapped out. Ones that have been given the axe, and summarily replaced with uh, less intensive versions, less taxing versions. Oh my god, I overshot the fucking switch because the momentum in this version of the game is murder. Uh, hello Ludicrous Fool 79 To answer your question, this game was in fact made by one person, or converted by one person, by the name of Rebecca... Rebe uh, it would help if I got their name right. I just interviewed him the other day. Rebecca Ann Heinemann, in 10 weeks time, after the publisher, Art Data Interactive, run by a, uh, a accused pedophile, Randy Scott, as has come to pass in recent years, spent months pretending to the press that he had the Doom source code, that they were developing the 3DO version of Doom that was going to be bigger, better, badder, all the adjectives, while secretly they didn't have a single uh, programmer on staff uh, addressing the game, uh, working on the game, and so Rebecca Ann Heinemann was sent by the 3DO company itself to make sure that something came of this fucking game. 
that they were able to publish something akin to Doom. And uh, sure enough, she pulled it off. A little bit of help from her friends, as the song goes, but mostly on her own. Uh, she began with the Jaguar Doom this code base, which was given to her by Carmack and uh, others that did, responsible for licensing such things out. And from that, she was able to build this 3DO Doom and get it to run in at least some capacity. Which, given the time frame, and given the fact that the publisher had, you know, had all these ridiculous expectations of her, they wanted her to add new guns to the game based on uh, literal, like, Photoshop jobs that the, their art guy had done and uh, overlaid on top of Doom screenshots and said, so you can put this in, right? I mean, we drew it for you, so there really shouldn't be any, uh, there shouldn't be any issues here. Just drag and drop that image file into the game. And, uh, bing, bang, boom, new weapon. It's crazy that, uh, Doom didn't think, uh, that the id guys didn't think of this when they were making the game. You could have had, like, a hundred weapons in here. But, uh, we're working on an article. Uh, 3DO Doom, uh, the story of its development and production and all that stuff has already been pretty well chronicled. So I worried at first when I started writing it that I wasn't going to have a unique angle on it or anything really of note to say with regards to it, but I'm finding that the record is is due for a bit of correction, long overdue. I interviewed Rebecca, and she had insights that, you know, were, were unique that I had not found online before. So those come in handy. But uh, moreover, I've uh, been sourcing some stuff that often seems to get ignored when uh, recounting the Chronicle of Doom on 3DO. Uh, or stuff that's been misrepresented. Of course, this is the common thread of articles I write for the Bad Game Hall of Fame. It always turns out that the way the story is understood is uh, very rarely, if ever, how it actually plays out in history when it comes to these bad games, and even the good games to some extent. And uh, where I'm inclined to believe that uh, Randy Scott is not a person to be believed, and that Rebecca Ann Heineman is generally trustworthy. Uh, there, there's some inconsistencies I have found with her story, uh, just in terms of like clerical details. I don't think she intends to mislead, but I think when this shit happened nearly 30 years ago, I think certain details are going to get twisted, and so I'm uh, making an effort to amend those details before I publish anything to article. Uh, Sega Saturn Port of Doom, not quite as bad as this one, also turned out to be not as good because of uh, something during its development. Uh, if I remember correctly, and I'm pretty sure I do with regards to that version of Doom, uh, they originally had a technique that rendered the game way faster, that had performance moving at a much better clip. But uh, what it resulted in, and what uh, Carmack would not abide by was affine texture warping, wherein you say, let's say you look at this wall here, and the coordinates for this tile are partially off screen. Uh, because the game, because the, the most 3D engines on like Saturn and PS1 era use like some, uh, I believe they're like floating point values, or something, I'm probably misusing that term in reference to this, but basically what happens is you get that swimming texture effect that is sort of emblematic of such releases of the era, and this effect was a big turnoff to, to Carmack, who insisted that they strip out this technique that was getting the game to run much faster, admittedly. And yes, there it is. Oh, nearly died getting it because of a uh, fucking collision there, but uh, BFG in hand. Now all I need is some damn health. Groovy. This is not a nice room, but I think a little, you can do a little sprucing up in here. I think it's a fixer-upper, put it generously. Okay. I've my kingdom for a hazard suit, and for momentum that does not get me stuck on edges, as my feet burn in the acid beneath. Uh, I'm backtracking a bit because there may have been health here. I would like to know before I proceed. Chances are no. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know what Jeremy Carmack is thinking here at all, asks uh, Ludicrous Fool, or not asks, I suppose. Uh, ponders. Uh, yeah, Carmack in recent years, I believe he's been re-interviewed about it. And he basically said, like, yeah, I shouldn't have uh, fucked that over so badly. But he was he was a technical guy, and he, he thought that the idea of the texture warping would, I don't know, like, somehow negatively impact the, uh, the weight of the engine he'd produced. Would somehow sully or tarnish the work that had gone into making it, uh, perspective correct on the PC front. Which, again... Not really a defense for effectively sandbagging the developer that got stuck with it. That was just trying to get the game to fucking run. Alright. Is that a caco? Well, whatever it is. Hopefully it got jibbed in the distance. Uh, Death Ferret had an utterly chaotic evening, so they're for a nice, happy, straightforward game which never gave anyone any trouble. That's damn right. This 3DO Doom here, it's a saint, I tell you. The panacea for your woes. Oh fuck, I walked right into lava. Ugh. <laughs> uh, no, we are uh, re rewriting that history as we do here. And one more rewrite while I'm at it, because I. There we go. Oh, this is so fucked, actually. We are in the wrong place at the wrong time and the wrong sort of way. I need that health. I also need to not get killed by the Baron on the other side. And I should probably deal with these lost souls as well. Alright. Nope, nope. I didn't want you to come in just yet. I'm not ready. Okay. You can see the homing here. Is this off an emulator or real hardware? This is an emulator. I am not equipped with a real 3DO. Uh, but to answer the second question, as soon actually, you know, let me deal with this first. Ugh. Yeah, no, that I don't. I don't know why I thought that would work at this range. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna try something that's not gonna work. I, I, I just insist on not replaying any of this level, so I'm just gonna cheat my way through it. If I died at like the beginning of the level, that'd be one thing, but I don't want to waste precious time. To answer your question, uh, Joe Bush, is this background music a part of the game, or did you add in this is a part of the game? It is the one uh, element of this game that is gets some amount of like respect, I guess. It is the CD soundtrack composed by Randy Scott. Uh, who, again, in, in case I haven't said it enough times, uh, child molester and president of uh, Art Data Interactive. Uh, so, uh, Rebecca Ann Heinemann could not get the sound drivers working uh, within the time that she was allotted in trying to bring Jaguar Doom to this. Not that Jaguar Doom had music either, but... Uh, it at least had the capability if it wasn't offloading all that, uh, that memory allocation to other things. Namely, like, hit detection, I think it is. Or some element of, like, the game code. Uh, I'm, I'm groaning because I'm still trying to figure out my way around this map right now. Again, I mean this game go way back, but that doesn't mean I need to, uh... That doesn't necessarily mean I've memorized every component of it. When in doubt. Blue key... Right. Okay. This is the door I just came out of, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, this is still the direction I need to go in. Or no, this is just sending me in a damn circle. Oh, I know it. This is the exciting gameplay you come here for, is watching a clumsy idiot constantly reference the map screen because they, uh, more or less forgot the, uh, the ins and outs of this 25, 30-year-old game. This is the BFG room. 
But we're so close because I need to go around here. The other end of the horseshoe. And eh, see? I was working towards something. I have half a clue. And that's that's gonna get us half the way there. Uh, level design is actually what I find most off-putting when I fail play the first two Doom games. Uh, some maps, some episodes are definitely better than others. Uh, maps that Sandy Peterson had a hand in, for example. Uh, divisive. Uh, I would say that this version of the game, with its uh, different textures and uh, harder to discern landmarks and signposting, does not do it any favors. And also, you know, getting turned around when you have like this slow performance. There's something about it that can disorient you in a way that's a lot more uh, affecting than on a PC, I would imagine. Uh, a PC running the game decently at the very least. As addressed before in uh, episode numero uno of this little playthrough, uh, PCs of the era of 93, the amount of them that could run Doom at an acceptable frame rate as we would deem it today at like 35 frames per second, because bear in mind, monitors back then were like 70 hertz refresh rates, more often than they were 60. But, uh, you'd be lucky to get like 10 or 15 frames before shrinking down the screen size in a way that is comparable to shrinking down the screen size uh, in this year version. But, you know, if you had a, uh, something better than a 486, you could probably play it at something like a decent clip. Uh, more specifically, I find them to be confusing mazes that lack flow and direction. There is, depending on the map, some have more flow, some have more direction than others, but there is absolutely a flow to all this. It's just a matter, you need to be tuned into that groove, you need to be tuned into that frequency, that wavelength, that they intend for you to be. And if you're modern gamer brained, not, not as a derisive thing, but if you've been trained by more modern games and the way they constantly waypoint shit, uh, then you're gonna have a rougher time of it because this requires you to intuit details or to like try to understand how these worlds are constructed in a way more than just like mechanical flow, if I'm making any sense here. I think I need to get into that room. Is that step? Perfect. Okay. Might as well start conserving ammo now. I will say, uh, also, I am just noticing, Ludicrous Fool, that you're, uh, the number in your name is 79, so... I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, you were born in 1979, possibly. That's always the assumption I make in these cases. Uh, so maybe you do know what it is to play a real classic game, and not just be, not that you weren't brought up on modern games like I was insinuating. But, uh, there is a real issue there. There is a, uh, there is a real uh, context for that stuff. That the era of games you were brought up in often informs how you approach games. Like, people who are used to cover shooters, who are used to, you know, basically running to a position, taking cover, so on and so forth, are gonna have a harder time with a game like this, because it expects you to be on your feet constantly, and that's just not how you're trained to play first-person shooters anymore. In the modern FPS, the second you leave cover, you're dead, so stands to reason that you would take that habit, you would take that hard ingrained idea of how to play games and some that you've refined potentially over the course of like decades. And yeah, then toss someone who's uh, never played anything before the year 2013 into Quake and see how that treats them, you know? So I get it to an extent. Let's use the BFG, why not? Funny, Kako. Right, range is a little harder to dictate in this game with the framing and the resolution and so on and so forth. But we got a nice dip there. We had a full second stall on that. Uh, for me, the most off-putting thing about these early FPS is how the FOV and camera height compared to ledges and steps and things make me feel about three feet tall. Well, you know, that's how uh, Doom Guy's so nimble. 
He's like Wolverine. For those who don't know, uh, for all you uh, millennials, back in my day, uh, the real Wolverine is uh, like five foot tall. Not this huge Jackman playing into the hunk shit. I, it occurs to me I have not been careful with my ammo conservation. And now we will suffer to some extent. I will also suffer for uh, the sin of uh, trying to find items hidden in the acid field. Uh, Video Game King, not just Eero, but also Scene. As somebody who got their start with PC FPSs is going to have a different perspective from somebody who got their start with mid-90s CRPGs, from somebody who's, what's an old shitty emulator, barely, Nesticle. Uh, we'll say. That's always the go-to. Where the Favicon for it on, uh, on Windows was a ball sack. And that's how you played your uh, NES games back in the day. Ludicrous Fool. Frame rate looks like he's in a constant state of start and stop motion in open areas. is very slow and choppy. Then when you walk up to a wall, something goes very quick and throws you off. Yeah, like, let's look at this wall here. Ooh, it's almost smooth, isn't it? But, I mean, that's just, again, that comes with how much stuff is rendered on screen. If you're really tuned in, you can figure out when the game is going to slow down more often than not by just being able to say, like, well, I'm approaching a wall, so I'm going to get a little performance gain here. I'm running to the Doom community, running the numbers, finding out that Doom guy runs about 90 miles per hour. But he's got places to go and people to meet. And those people happen to be demons. And by meet, I mean he's going to uh, murder them. You know, very busy. Very late for very important dates. Uh, this way? Let me just close the door on you. And buy myself a couple seconds to... Wait, wait, there we go. Yeah, I used the plasma gun to finish there just so I can, uh... Conserve a rocket. Thinking that's affecting our ability to use the BFG later. When we might actually need it, but... When has that ever stopped me? Hey Cass, are you familiar with the other FPSs? Is this switch is supposed to bring... Oh, I'm stupid. I'm just not reacting in time. Uh, other FPSs have 3DOs. Get from Monster Manor is neat. Uh, Killing Time is a neat theme. Uh, Killing Time, which was created, by the way, by... First person answer in the chat. Gets a treat. Uh, Ludacris. Places to go and people to meet. Uh, anyone think of Rogue Warrior when you said that? I believe the line as delivered by Ricky Work in that game is place to go, people to kill. Which is what I should have gone with. I should have gone for the Rogue Warrior reference. But, uh... Oh, I'm so fucked. I should not have... I, I was contemplating rewinding, but no, I'll play it through. Oh, this fucking room. Yeah, fuck this. Let's rewind. It's like we're playing Club Drive on the, on the Atari Jaguar. Uh, Video Game King. Rebecca, last name I can't remember? The person who programmed this board, Doom. Yeah, you're... I mean, half credit. You get, like... Thank you. Yes, the ferret king for the, uh... For the, for the steal. Extra points. Rebecca and Heinemann. Is it actually people to meet in that really funny rap song? Or it actually is uh, people to meet in that really funny rap song near the end of Rogue Warrior. Oh yeah, places to go, people to meet. Yeah, yeah but I think when he drops it as a quip in-game, when he drops it as a random voice line, I think it is the, uh... Then again, it could be wrong. It's been a minute since we played Rogue Warrior, reviewed it for the site. Swords would never have to play it ever again, etc. The only way I would replay Rogue Warrior at this point is if uh, I could play the multiplayer, because that's something I missed out on. It was an element I had to sort of guess at when I was writing the article just because it was dead on arrival, and there's only like one or two bits of surviving footage 
of that uh, multiplayer mode in action. So it occurs to me I have this blue key card. Question is. Alright, there we go. I figured I remembered how to. Okay. So it occurs to me that the auto map here actually does inform you as to what vi sectors you visited, which ones you haven't. So this is actually is practical. We need to make our way to the top right, uh, top left corner, but in the meantime, there should be some sort of secret here. The map shouldn't lie like that. It's not a lie. There's something. There's absolutely something I would do to trigger this wall elsewhere in the level, but I'm, I'm not particularly compelled to figure that out. We already have every weapon in the game. Uh, barring the ones that uh, Randy Scott had uh, dreamt of and had planned to uh, have Rebecca incorporate. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's, let's figure out this wall, though. Whatever secret it may lie in wait here. Tap it once, tap it twice. Oh, oh, I, I, okay. I think, I think I remember it. It's coming back to me like a boomerang. Uh, this truly was the era, or that truly was. This was not the era of obligatory multiplayer and console shooters. Uh, we are the conversation in the chat is still uh, in with regards to Rogue Warrior 2009 at all. Incredibly, Shell Shock 2: Blood Trails, which is effectively Rogue Warrior Part Two. Same publisher, same engine, uh, different development team. Apparently, that's where the core uh, core design people went at a certain point. But uh, yeah, uh, that game didn't have multiplayer mode. That game was all pure cinematic campaign, baby. Just the way God intended. I think there's a way to lower those, but again, at this point. Let's not waste any more time than we have to. When the frame rates are this perilous, or this dodgy, I don't need to be necessarily going on a thorough hunt for every last secret. Now we've picked up a few viewers, by the way. I will again float the question that I so often like to. Oh, I am stuck in a wall. Which is my cue to rewind. Yeah, see that? We want to avoid that happening. I'm also going to conserve it, though, for a little bit here. Uh, the question I pose to chat, you know, questions about any bad game. Doesn't matter if it's Doom-related or not. 3DO-related or not. I just like having something to do to occupy my time and my mind while I'm... Effectively autopilot in these games. Don't know why it was called Shell Shock 2. It had nothing to do with the first game, which was developed by Horizon. Uh, it is a sequel. Uh, the Cal Walker, the brother of the protagonists of the game, uh, is the playable character, one of the three playable characters you can select from, in Shell Shock, the original Shell Shock number 67. So they attempt to tie it into the continuity. But what it really was was just some attempt to leverage whatever fleeting name recognition may have existed for Shellshock at that time. Or, more likely, the development of that game isn't uh, fully chronicled. Uh, maybe I'll get to that in time. Wink, wink. But I get the impression that it was originally intended as a more ambitious Vietnam shooter. More in line with uh, the tone of the original game. We have these enemies unaware. I would like to encourage some monster infighting between these two. That's not gonna happen. So the best I can hope for is just to get past that guy. Ooh, this is dicey. Alright. I see a through line. Oh, these guys though. This is a mean room. Let me 
tap this twice. Using up a little more rocket launcher ammo than I would have liked, but... Desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, Jin Modensho. Ambitious inbuilt developers aiming too high for the PC engine or a bunch of guys trying and failing to copy 3D World Runner. Uh, well, you know, people who worked on that game uh, also worked on Super Monkey Daiboken. At least one or two commonalities there. So I'm going to err on the side of ambition. Misplaced ambition. Uh, these pictures remind me of the Windows 95 Maze screensaver. Well, yeah, the, the Windows 95 Maze screensaver, for what it's worth, was inspired very much by Doom. Because the big marketing push for uh, Windows 95, or one of them, you know, a big part of its uh, advertising was the fact that they were developing uh, Final Doom. Specifically to run on Windows machines. Or not, would that be Final Doom? Would Final Doom... Yeah, that, that is Final Doom. I, I, I had it conflated for a second with the PlayStation versions of Doom. Which I think they're also called Final Doom. It's, it's a whole thing. Bad naming convention. Uh, but yeah. So, and then, you know, there's that screensaver. Then there's the Microsoft Excel uh, 95 Easter egg. Where you could unlock a 2.5D virtual world in it by entering some uh, data into the cells in some sort of way. I, I, I couldn't tell you what the code for that was. I've, I've played it before. I've executed it on an actual machine, which is fun to do. But yeah, Windows 95 screensaver is very much meant to evoke, like, that kind of corridor shooter vibe. Uh, Ludicrous Fool, to specify, uh, Rebellion published the wait no no IDOS published the game. Rebellion Developments acquired core design and and incorporated them into their larger studio. Uh, Rebellion Derby, yeah. Uh, no, Rogue Warrior was it may have been the same team. Uh, what I can tell you is that there is a interview with a former core design employee, someone who had worked on uh, Tomb Raider previously for the company, and they talk about the process of their studio getting absorbed into Rebellion and uh, being made to work on Shellshock and how it was just like everyone knew the game was going to suck absolute shit, and they were basically all trapped on the project and uh, just basically regretting the entire venture as it were. We have expended ammo for everything except for the, uh, plasma rifle, by the way. Oh wait, nope, I fucked up. I do not have enough health to, uh, finish this level, possibly. Unless I do, like, a really good speed strafe. That was the wrong portal. That was the wrong teleport. Okay, what I need to do is get into that corner specifically. Right, that'll raise that. And then if I turn back around, we'll be up here. And then all we need to do is pop this ball into the hole. I knew it was there, too! Okay, here's what we're gonna do to take care of those guys. Phew, we are out of the Deimos lab. Uh, Bob and the head explosion thing is such a weird detail. I think it was in the PS1 version first, but how'd they get it, I wonder? Oh. I would imagine it was ready in Jaguar Doom, which the PlayStation Doom was based off of. I am half tempted just to die here so I can have pistol start and at least have health. Oh, 
but no, I think I'm gonna try to troubleshoot this. I'm gonna try to find some way to. I don't wanna waste the BFG. Oh wait, we have 20 rounds in this? Okay, that'll get me there. No. That's, it's so tricky with the momentum being what it is. That's all I need. There's even health for me. Let's grab that, then I'll worry about picking up that shotgun ammo, which is part two of my plan. Ah. I still, I'm still sticking by this plan. This is, this is a fine plan. It's my execution that is sloppy. And I want to not completely waste the uh, remainder of my plasma ammo. Uh, so Cass, of the three, what's your favorite Doom? 3DX, uh, 32X, 3DO, or SNES? Uh, 32X, it's the most playable. SNES compromises entirely too much. Not having, like, sprites for the backs of enemies, having only forward-facing sprites really, uh, affects the playability of that for me. It's the most novel, I think it's the most interesting, besides this one. In the sense of just, like, it's wild they got to run in the first place. And yes, granted, they crammed that cartridge full of bullshit in order to get it to run. So it's not just, like, by the power of ingenuity, it's like, we're going to force this problem to not be a problem anymore. We're going to just basically throw processors to this until it does something on the Super Nintendo that's not supposed to do. But still, there's, there's an interesting... There's, there's a novelty to that in itself. But yeah, most playable, 32x by Process Illumination. Uh, Video Game King disagrees, says the 3DO is the most playable of those options. I, I mean, look, this is playable. I'm playing it, right? Aren't I? But I, it's certainly far from ideal. And again, the, the disclaimer I keep putting up to say that uh, back in the day, uh, PCs that uh, would have been around at the time that Doom came out on DOS, not all of them were up to the task of running Doom at the intended frame rates. So you had a lot of machines that back then that were struggling, doing uh, single digit frame rates probably with the stream size maxed out, trying to get something running. So this experience is at least somewhat equivalent to that. We, we all have, at this point in our minds, like a vision of Doom running in like a source port in our brains. Like, try as you might, like, it's hard to imagine Doom running in anything other than 70 frames per second. And I say 70 because that's what, you know, the maximum frame rate of monitors back then. That's the, the game was timed for intervals of 35 frames per second. But I guess, you know, more accurate, like, so it would be 60 hertz in your head, in any case. Anyway, the point being that, uh, it, you know, it, it's hard to remember those days, even if you were around for them, as I was. At a certain point, those memories get hazy. At a certain point, those memories can trick you into thinking, uh, things were better than they were. You know, it's interesting, and I, I have been writing the article. I have been working on the article for 3DO Doom, as I should, uh, and there was a point I made in it, which was that, uh, fuck me, uh, so, PC gaming, <laughs> for the longest time it was chasing after console quality graphics, right? Because you, you take a PC game, a, a platformer of the era, and they ran like dog shit up until 1991 when it came around and made that Super Mario Bros. 3 conversion in a week after Carmack discovered adaptive tile refresh. And that's when they were off to the races, basically, and they figured that the PCs could match uh, console presentations and uh, do a decent job of it. Then obviously comes Wolfenstein. You know, there's also Hover Tank and Catacombs 3D, but no one gives a shit about those, right? Uh, 
Anyway, along comes these 2.5D FPSs and suddenly the shoe's on the other foot, right? And suddenly it's the uh, console manufacturers that are having to play catch up and that are desperately bidding on the rights to Doom to be like, I don't know if our consoles can run this, but they better because we are lagging right now. We need to show that our consoles are still capable in this market. So it was a complete turnaround. Also, hello, PC98 Jr. Hello, my future girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> current girlfriend. Uh, Doom was hilarious enough released on December 10th, 1993, which was the day after the infamous video game congressional hearing, says Ludicrous Fool. Uh, yes, they, they got in just under the wire on that one. Uh, those, uh, those, those are the Senate congressional hearings, right? So that's, that's covered in the Night Trap article on the Bad Game Hall of Fame. Uh, for those who need a primer, refresher, what have you. I, I want that chain gun. It'd be awesome. Just perfect. It takes a full, like, three seconds to calibrate in order to step on the tile that you want to step on. But hey, that's what happens when your frame rate is awesome as this. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna eke out a little more performance on this map, I've decided. Here we go. Let's see how long y'all tolerate this for. actually does make it incredibly difficult to parse uh, details of the environment. But hey, you know, we're hitting a smooth 20. Yeah. Ludicrous Rule 79, do you take suggestions for games to cover? Uh, sure. Go ahead. I can't promise I'll get to it immediately. And there's a very good chance it's really on the master list that I don't actually end up sharing with anyone, but does exist. But uh, if it's something novel, something I haven't heard of before, I will absolutely put it on the list. And it will be scrolled and seen on a daily basis as I consult my list. Just thinking about, like, what would I want to write about today? What would the next article be? That is the process. It is a stupid one. Uh, it's not very effective or efficient, but uh, it is a process, by a uh, strict definition of the word. There should be a door here. I think there may be a switch to open that up. I know there's also one other big change in this map. And I will point it out when I get there. Because when I played this version of Doom for the first time, and was not aware of, this in of the severity of the changes, let's say, uh, so oh, I'll get that when I get to that. Uh, the Death Ferret. I was going to suggest uh, Count Duckula 2 for the Spectrum, but I don't want to start another chat, another war about the British uh, game scene. Yeah, that was a fun one to uh, to shit on last episode, to shit on yesterday, the whole bridge game scene. Uh, Count Duckula, I, I know of, I'm familiar with. I didn't know the second game was necessarily of a uh, particular reputation. I know the first one was liked well enough, liked well enough to get a squeakle at the very least, but uh, uh, Ludicrous Fool, without warning, yep, uh, our victory, yep, uh, Soldier Fortune Payback, yep, yep. I, I, those are all on the list. I will uh, let you know. They're good recommendations, don't get me wrong. Uh, don't feel bad. Again, my list is like 700 games long, so the, 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 a lot of them get on there. Soldier Fortune Payback had its birthday in the past uh, week or two, if I remember correctly. I definitely was capturing footage for that sometime in the past month or so. Uh, my girlfriend recommending Yik. Uh, yes, Yik is on the list, hun. Don't you worry. Oh, too close. Again, hard to gauge distance when the screen is, uh, what it is. Uh, Doctor the Two got a 9% review score at the time. That is rare for the British mags, because they usually just... ...loved everything that they got thrown at them. They usually would plug anything away. Uh, let's do, let's do full screen again. Super Mario Bros. 2 Lost Levels. 
Uh, interesting fact, I don't know if you knew this or not, but there was once a game called Doki Doki Panic, and here's the crazy thing about it. <laughs> Lost Levels isn't good. I get why it exists, and I get the audience for it, as it were, but yeah. Not a Lost Levels fan. I, uh, I played through the Lost Levels in the best possible way, which was Super Mario Bros. Deluxe in the Game Boy Color, where the screen is, like, basically a snapshot, or, like, you know, like a zoom-in version. You're, you're basically missing, like, you know, a solid hundred pixels around every corner of the screen, is what I'm trying to say, and, uh, mangling the words, too. But, uh, yeah, clearly the ideal way to play a game that is all about, uh, map memorization, predicting the unpredictable, and so on and so forth. The end is near. Oh, I forgot the part in the map that I was going to point out. Uh, there's some, okay, uh, there's still the secret exit in the original version of this map at a certain point. And I spent a good long while being like, I know there's supposed to be a fucking door here. And I spent like 20 minutes going back and forth in this map until I looked it up online. And I'm like, oh, that's right, there's no secret levels in this besides the one that you can get to from E1 M3. So that time was for naught. Uh, which is worse? Lost Levels in the Game Boy Color, like that, or Sonic 2 on Game Gear? How about Lost Levels? Because those Sonic games on Game Gear are not terrible. They're original creations. They're designed with the limitations of that screen and system in mind. Turning Point Follow Liberty, yes, that is on the list as well. Uh, from the creators of... Okay, was, was that Spark Unlimited, or was that... Uh... Were they the people who did... Velvet Assassin, or were they people who did Tunnel Rats 1968? Or are those both one and the same? And who did Legendary? So many shitty first-person shooters from that era, so little time, so much confusion. Uh, someone mentioning Sonic 1 on Game Boy Advance, Peter and King mentioning it. Uh, yeah, no, that, that one's choice. I would have gone with that one, if uh, in that hypothetical, in which case I would say Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels 2, probably, right? I don't know, I've not played enough of the Sonic 1 Game Boy Advance ports uh, to make a full determination. I know it's definitely disappointing, though. I know it's definitely, like, you know, frustrating to see just how shitty that game runs, given, you know, the era, given how much time we've had to iron this sort of shit out. But, you know, nothing but the best for Sonic's 15th. His 15th birthday blowout. This is weird design, this level, by the way. Okay, usually... Uh, what they would do in a map like this is give you a hazard suit. But for whoever designed this map was not clued into the design theme to what uh, Romero had established in other maps. And so they just give you health pickups at the edge of the acid pools. Uh, Ludicrous Fool pointing out... Yes, okay, Spark Unlimited. I got that right. I had it partially there. Again... A lot of bad first-person shooters from that era. Yeah, I try to keep track of those developers, but, uh... Spark Unlimited, who would go on to do... Uh, give me a second. Give me a second to think about this, to try to remember this. Who would do Lost Planet 3, I know that much. And Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z was their last game before they completely shut down. Did they have anything else of note? My my heart tells me no, but my brain is thinking there's something I'm forgetting. Yeah, they did legendary on that list too. Yes, okay. And I forgot about the Call of Duty games, the, the, the console Call of Duty that they did. But I was just thinking of bad games, and those ones are passable at the very least. High marks, I know. I might as well just keep playing this at the full screen resolution, right? I think it's better the more frames we lose. I think we're really conveying the experience of Doom 3DO with lossier, uh, with lossier frames, more frames being dropped. Not dropped by the stream, mind you, but dropped by the actual console. 
in this case. I think my internet's good enough that I don't drop streams when I... Or drop frames while I stream, even. Also, uh... Mm, yeah, okay. Trying to commit pertinent details of the auto map to memory. I think I'm going the right way. There might be, like, a spare rocket there somewhere. Oh! Houston, we have a monster closet. I think I am trapped between... Poor little guy. Would you have a cacodemon as a pet? Yes or no? That's not a question in the chat. That's, that's a question I'm posing in the chat. If they were nice, and if they're, like, weird decaying flesh was, like, fuzzy or comfy or, you know, like, soft to the touch. I don't know. Maybe you maybe you want to have it fleshy. Maybe you want to pet a abomination of God. Just the way that uh, the devil made him. I don't know. I'm not the judge-free zone. I got turned around. So I, I heard... Th the pinkies there, obviously. But did I also hear a baron? Yeah, I see him walking around in the background. Here comes trouble. How many rockets do I have? <sighs> I shouldn't waste these. Give him a little bit of everything. Uh, as for COD games to put on your list, I strongly recommend the end gauge of the first Call of Duty. Uh, that does not currently emulate an EKA 2L1, the, the emulator with the most confusing fucking name of all time. Uh, otherwise, I would love to. There are a few other Engage games I will get to uh, before it. But also, that version of Call of Duty isn't terrible, per se. It's fine for what it is. It was incredibly novel to see, running in any capacity. Uh, Call of Duty World at War, Final Fronts, which is Rebellion developed, yeah. Again, that's probably one of the best, most fundamentally sound first-person shooters Rebellion ever got to make. It's still not very good, but it is one of the best they got to make. I mean, compared to the likes of uh, Medal of Honor Infiltrator on the Game Boy Advance, which they uh, converted, trying to put a fucking 3D FPS on the Game Boy Advance. Well, I say that, but there's actually a few good ones, like the X vs. Sephir games on GBA. Version of Duke Nukem is fine. Anyway, uh, there's an article up on the site for Metal of Honor. Did I say Infiltrator? I meant to say Underground, is what I meant to say. If so. Anyway, look up Medal of Honor Underground GBA. And look up uh, Bad Game Hall of Fame when you search to get the most informed and awesome and well-written takes uh, you've ever done read about games. I don't know who runs that site. They're just a real genius of writing. Probably really cool to hang out with. Uh, I'd, I'd buy him a drink, personally. I don't even pledge to them on Patreon. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, far be it for me to tell you how to spend your money, but I think that Cassidy person uh, kind of deserves to be a billionaire for all the shit they do. That may or may not actually be true. Uh, the Death Fair, doing Engage games on the Hall of Fame all Scrolls shooting? Nah. I mean, I did the... Okay, first of all, I did the script for Stop Skeletons from Fighting on the Engage. We did the whole history of it. And, uh... And I think we came across as very fair to it. I, I made sure the tone of it wasn't just, look at this bullshit. I, I tried to speak to some of the merits of it in writing that script. Uh, and I think if I wrote an article, I would follow in that similar tradition. There's certainly positive things to be said about uh, certain Engage games. If I did, like, Red Faction, for example, John Romero's Red Faction conversion, uh, if you can even call it that, more like a demake to the Engage. Speaking of fucking first-person shooters and consoles that were not equipped for them, though, again, Engage did have Ashen, which was actually pretty legitimately good. Uh, anyway, yeah, if I did something like a Red Faction... I could get into the whole history of how uh, John Romero was made to become, like, a spokesperson for the Engage. There's definitely an interesting hook there. I could go into uh, how it deviates from the console game. I could go into how they tried to 
you know, half-heartedly incorporate something like the Geomod, where you could, like, shoot down walls, blow up the environment to a very limited extent. And I, I can commend it for running smooth enough for what it is. Alright, I want to separate the map. We have blue key card, which means we need to get to that corner. Oh, yeah, okay, it's all coming back to me. Uh, Ludicrous Fool. I ah, see, you've been listening to games this whole time, and I finally caught you on one you were not aware of. Uh, no, I mean, kudos to you, you've been mentioning a lot of deep cut stuff, so I actually appreciate that. I, I appreciate a true connoisseur, uh, so I'm happy to provide you with a little bit of knowledge you didn't have coming in. Yes, John Romero and Monkey Head Games, Monkey Stone Games. It was a studio he founded after Ion Storm. He had Tom Hall in tow, and they did some mobile games. And they also had an interest in the N-Gage. Uh, in the process of developing for uh, N-Gage, they made a version, we'll call it, of Red Faction for said console. And it's playable. It's more of a platformer than the original game, which sounds a little weird. Oh, these bastards. One more key, huh? I thought I could get away with it. No, separate the map. What corner is it to be? Well, I guess it's over there, isn't it? I have to hold down B and press start to bring up the map. And to put it away at that. Right, the only corner of the map as of yet unexplored. Well, that's the entrance. Ah, getting through doors is somehow the toughest thing you can do in this game. No, we've been here. I've been to this place before. Uh... Alright, folks, I hope you're ready for uh, another several minutes of seemingly aimless wandering. Uh... Avera Paz. Talk about handhelds. Gizmodo deserves a chance in the Hall of Fame. The problem is there's no emulator for that system. Right. I uh, definitely want to do the uh, Tiger Telematics Gizmondo story. Want to do it some amount of justice. Want to give it something like a fair shake. Uh, there may not be emulation for it, but if I were to get hands on an actual piece of hardware, it is uh, the entire system library is available on Flashcard on Flash Media. It is very easy to run. Uh, pirate software on that at the very least, so when I have a trade-off like that, uh, I can definitely... Oh! Hold on. Ah! I see where I'm supposed to go! Tricky, tricky. Uh, because Mondo is lucky the few games that have released are even still around online today. I mean... So... Whenever there's a flop handheld, uh, or any flop console really, you'll always find a community of people who are like, dedicated to dumping this stuff. There is still an, a very active, if I remember, subreddit for the uh, Tiger Telematic Gizmondo. In the same way that there is a very active Discord for the N-Gage and efforts to preserve and emulate that. Dragon King, has anyone ever made headway on emulating that? Not the last I checked. A correct me wrong, isn't that like some version of Palm OS? Which I think like, in a similar way to the fact that E key A to L1, beep boop, beep boop, so on and so forth, is, is less intended to be an N-Gage emulator per se, and more just a general emulator for Symbian, the, uh, the operating system Symbian for phones and just incidentally happens to run N-Gage games pretty well. Uh, I would think that someone, in the process of figuring out uh, Palm OS emulation, would eventually figure out how to like cram a 3D accelerator in there, comparable to what the Gizmondo would have had, and you know, then you're off to the races. But that's assuming it is Palm OS, and I'm not just talking out of my ass on that factoid. But, you know, I'm liable to do, as liable as anyone. There's that yellow key. And you can also tell, just straight away, this room is going to have monster closets. That the second you touch that key, that shit's going to get real in this room. You know, for as much shit as given the monster closets, 
in this game and in games like it and stuff like Doom 3. If you have any sense of, like, how levels are developed for video games, yeah, like, obvious trap. They even give you invisibility in this one, so they're being nice to you on this. Uh, ever saw Did You Know Gaming's video on the Japanese mobile game preservation crisis? Uh, I'm gonna give a answer to this that's a little long-winded, so bear with me. Uh, no, I have not seen the Do You Know Gaming episode on it. I am aware of it as a situation. I follow people who are more tuned into the actual issues affecting that process, who are more passionate about it, who, let's say, aren't just co-opting it as an issue in order to get some view count and chase after, like, you know, it's time in the spotlight. Uh, I have some issues with Do You Know Gaming, namely the fact that they don't fact-check anything, that they uh, never properly source their shit, uh, and the fact that they have that one weird dude on staff who runs a, a Twitter account that exists solely for the purpose of promoting the, the channel, but, like, is not, like, advertised as being a promotional vehicle for that channel. Where they post, like, those shitty clickbait article-style uh, images that have, like, you know, screenshot of the game, then uh, unattributed text, and so forth. I don't know. I know people who have worked for Did You Know Gaming, or who have done collaborations with them. Derek and Grace. They stop skeletons from fighting, who I am employed by in some capacity. Uh, have definitely contributed to that. But I've also heard horror stories come out of, like, the production process on that. And how people have just, like... There's, there's definitely, they've definitely had their share of issues in terms of, like, stuff they presented. I don't know. I don't want to get too negative. I don't want to be too bitter or sound like I'm just, like, shitting on them for no reason. They're, they're fine. They're, they're accessible. They're good enough at getting people interested in the idea of video games being developed by actual people and, you know, having studios attached and so forth. But at the same time, I don't know. I... I don't want to say, like, I've graduated beyond it. Because that sounds very pretentious in a way that I'm... that I'm vehemently against. I want things to be as accessible as possible. I want information to be as freely available as possible. I would just like it if it was correct. Uh... And if it wasn't completely reductionist. We got 100% secrets in that level. And 100% items. Completely unintentional. Into the spawning bats we go. So I don't know. Don't mind me. I am a, uh, a jaded and cynical old fool. And I... You don't need to listen to my opinion on YouTube channels. That said, uh, I will... Always take the opportunity to shit on that pad in game theory. That is just straight fucking dog shit. And if I have any overlap with that audience, I would be fucking amazed. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, Ludicrous Wheels, you're pointing out, yeah, the problem is that a lot of uh, Japanese made mobile games are made for like feature phone type devices, a lot of stuff isn't preserved. Uh, people are dumping iMode right now, uh, and furiously trying to, like, get the archives at least downloaded, and then to see if anything can be pulled out of them. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's a whole thing. Uh, it would be nice to see that stuff preserved. There's definitely a lot of novel stuff that didn't make it to, like, a lot- a, a fair amount of that stuff got converted to J2ME, but obviously not all of it, especially franchises that weren't successful here in the West, but were in Japan. So yeah, there, there's a veritable treasure trove of games there that are going to be, uh, presumptively lost in the coming days. Uh, as they're about to, like, shut it down, like, I think in, like, a week from now, as a matter of fact. So clock is ticking. I mean, it goes to show, like, you know, how much stock we really put into mobile games at, in, of that era, you know? There was that thought that mobile games were going to be the new games, that it was going to overwrite everything, and yet the way they treated it so disposably that those games were just, like, meant to be consumed and thrown away, proverbially, more like deleted off your phone and not really thought about. That was the future of gaming! 
or so folk thoughts. I mean, granted, I guess that panic really did begin more in earnest in, what, like 2007, 2008, iOS, Android, so on and so forth. And vulnerability sphere. I think I'm using it in the wrong room. I think the idea is I'm supposed to grab that. And there's a more uh, dangerous room I could be in right now. I go on to really maximize the use of this. And that is certainly not it. Oh, so short lived. I think we'll manage though without invincibility. I don't know, I guess, uh, I guess I'm a preservationist, right? Of, of, in some capacity. I, I more preserve information about games than the games themselves. I'm not willing to invest in hardware and I don't have the funds to, like, place bids on prototype cartridges and what have you. But that's definitely the sphere I'm most closely associated with, most directly attached to, most adjacent to. If you're going to pigeonhole me as one sort of thing, I guess it would be preservationist at the end of the day. But, uh... Is there, like, a trap door in one of these? Can I run across? Can I do a speed straight from here to there? I'm sure I could on PC, uh, but prospects of doing it on a 3DO controller are a little dicier. I'll try and rewind. Oh, yeah, this is super dicey. Ah, one more try. No. No, we're gonna have to play this game the right way. I mentioned the preservation thing, because obviously, you know, a lot of those sort of sorts of issues come up. Uh, I think it's relevant. I think it's worth it to bring it up in a chat like this. A lot of like-minded people in the audience. Uh... I don't even know if I've actually had a grander point to make there. It may have just been a uh, an errant thought more than anything. Do I have shotgun ammo still? Yeah, we're really gonna have to rely on the uh, plasma coming up. I remember having some difficulty with this map. It's something about like how the process of getting up there. Let's problem solve this before anything else. It would help if I looked at the map, wouldn't it? Uh, Ludicrous Fool, most of the games I suggested, or for a few of the games I suggested, there isn't and much of any information on the development of them. Uh, to that I'd say you'd be surprised. <laughs> if you know where to look, that is the uh, Bad Game Hall of Fame mantra to some extent. I hope the door closed behind me. I hope the door shut behind me on the way out. Uh, tip for researching games. Uh, if you can't find anything directly about the game that you're trying to research, research just every other game the studio made, look at the history of those, and look at press statements surrounding those, like, that are from adjacent points in history. Not necessarily the same day and time uh, of that release, but, you know, like, a couple months in, a couple months out of the game coming out. And what you'll find is, you know, a lot of, like, teaser stuff, like, them saying, like, our next game's gonna have this and this and this, and from there you can sort of get a... a decent jump on studio's direction. That may be pretty obvious advice, all things told. I have been walking back and forth between the same two fucking rooms, but when everything is just gray rock... Right, let's make an effort here.
Because I don't even know if I'm supposed to have that yellow key yet. Maybe there's something, like, if I drop down to the green, there might be, like, a door underneath or something. It's worth a shot at the least, right? Yeah, that's a big fat nope, huh? What is that door there? I would love to know. I would really honestly love this to speed strafe and not play this level. Because it seems like it's going to be a challenge to figure out. Well, that said, there was... I think I did miss an entire section of the map here. Yeah, I didn't go up this, did I? Uh, and Death Ferret, as they point out, Elf Bowling tells us you can find useful information by clicking on the edit history of uh, wiki, wiki pages. Sure enough, if you can find a developer stupid enough to try to use Wikipedia as a... as a press release zone, then who knows what you might find. I was hoping for a key in this fucking closet, but... Because right now it's feeling like another dead end. And I know there's gotta be something more to this room. Huh? What if I go there? Okay. This is level start, retrace steps, staircase, down? I don't recall taking an elevator yet in this level. I think the health at the very least. Ah, yeah, okay. Alright. That explains a bit. I knew that yellow key, uh, I knew this fucking room came back at some point. Second thought, let's not waste. Wait, I don't have any shotgun. Oh, yeah, I do have. I did, I did have shotgun ammo at some point. Thank God. Now all I need to do is actually hit the barrel. Two out of three shots, not bad. Uh, if you think there's not going to be monster closets in this room, you ain't played much uh, first-person shooters. I'll tell you what. As soon as I find the switch to lower that. Yeah, just kidding, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I convinced myself there was going to be one there. So convincing am I. My silver tongue. My uh, limitless charisma. Now, do you remember where the red door was? Very good. This will open up a bridge. said this will open up a, a bridge. There we go. I have to be very careful not to fall into the, the spawning vat, as it were. Alright, this map. This will be the last one we play in this episode. Uh, because it's the last map of the episode, as it turns out. Uh, but this is what replaces the Cyber Demon fight. This would be E2M8. This is where this should line up with. 
but uh, instead of the Cyber Demon fight, it is something completely different, because the Cyber Demon does not exist in this version of the game, because it would have been too difficult to implement. When I say this version of the game, I mean this and the Jaguar derivatives, and all the other Jaguar der derivatives, I should say. Oh, we are getting oodles of frames, though. That was a less than auspicious start. In fact, hold on. I should not have used a shotgun in the first place. That was my folly. This is a situation where it is appropriate. Oh, they spawn people behind me too? As of yet, this is not going too much better than my first attempt. Okay. I do want to conserve energy for BFG, potentially. If I need it in a pinch. If I can get through that door. There we go. Alright, now what we obviously want to do here is shoot those fucking barrels. Beautiful. Let's get rid of this peanuts gallery up here. It's going to be hurling fireballs on me otherwise. Alright, with them eliminated, you start hidden switches. Oh wait, no, they're going to do this bullshit to me first. Give me a Berserker pack so it switches me to fists, and then immediately throw a Baron of Hell. Okay, I don't think I'm going to end up using the BFG, let's just... Because I remember they stagger all the enemies that come out in this. They don't just have like 50 enemies come out at once, they do it like in groups of 10 or 12. Because if they could do 50 enemies at once, this would be this would not be the Jaguar version. You know, they would have just done the Cyber Demon map. If they could hit that kind of performance, steadily. Ooh, that turn. Make my shots ring untrue. Well, thank God there's health in this guy's closet. Because I've uh, fucked up and I need it. At least there's a nice little pocket here for me to do. I had plenty of time to dodge that fucking fireball. Not that one. One before it, though. No. Nope. This is what I want. Okay. So, see, they're all coming out of closets. All coming out of different closets. Every time you kill one group of enemies, a new one opens. I see some rockets in there that I'm going to go for. Even though there's probably enemies inside of here. This, this, these are all uh, for people who would, might be pistol starting, by the way. So if you die, they're at least throwing you a bone being like, okay, I'm gonna have a shotgun. Probably need a rocket launcher for this. Now, the question is, what door does it open? one here, I suppose. And that's it. That's way better than a Cyber Demon fight. I mean, who would even want to fight against a really cool guy with a gun for an arm and shoot 60 rockets at him? Not me, no siree, Bob. Alright. Actually, you know what? Let's... Here's what I'm gonna do. Because I want to start on this. We're going to finish this game. There's only one more episode of Doom included in this game. So, quick save there. And then, uh, when we return to this in the coming days to finish out Doom, I can just pick up right from that title screen. Isn't that novel? 
Uh, that said, like last time, we do have a little bit of time. I like to do two hours. I like to do a tight two. So we could load up something else in the interim. I think I have an idea of what I want to play. We're going to stick with the 3DO, for better or for worse, and to a game that is, uh, has, is related to Doom on 3DO, not just because it's on the 3DO, but because uh, there is a uh, certain name. I don't know if they're going to show up in the credits here. I forget, though. They definitely gave money to this game in order to uh, ensure its creation. Uh, yeah, we're playing Rise of the Robots. I do want to go through these title screens because I'm, I'm waiting for them all. Nope, they do not put it in the game. Uh, but yeah, Randy Scott funded development of fucking Rise of the Robots. No more, no less. And they actually picked up the distribution and promotion rights to the game on 3DO for it. Look at these cutting-edge cutscenes. This game was really banked as being, like, a cutting-edge in graphics, but more importantly, cutting-edge of artificial intelligence. Uh, do you know those people did a third fighting game called Theater of Pain? Uh, Theater of the Pain, that's actually semi-decent, asked Bobinator. I believe that would come up at some point. I'm skipping past these cutscenes. You have to skip through... Every individual fucking movie there. And there are a few of them. Cinematics on, we'll keep them on. Best of three. Alright. I just want to go backwards. There we go. Yes, I know the FMV, FMVs are actually very cool for that time, but uh, at the same time, the fact that to get into the game you have to skip past no less than four of them in addition to the title cards that pop up. Strike a T-pose, baby. Oh, it is top of the I forgot that Brian May is in the news. Brian May, by the way, made the soundtrack to this game. Uh, and is currently in the news because accusations of transphobia. Okay, yes, we get it. We're fighting a robot. That we are a robot, we are fighting a robot. Let's see if we remember anything about how to play this game. And we're not going for a completion, we're just going to play a little bit of this. Kill a little bit of time. Alright. You can use I can timer scam them. Seems like every button does the same attack. Oh no, I see. Some of them have more animation than the other. I'm sure if I hold different directions, get some different inputs going. Yeah, if I hold L when pressing an attack button, I do the sweep kick. L or R. Yeah, so to do kicks, you hold down L or R in conjunction with the buttons that you press. Where each of the buttons that you press is weak, strong, medium. Or, you know. Weak but quick. Medium but slightly slower. Strong but slowest. And to do kicks, it's L or R is modifier. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is this is a bad way to do it. That's like, reminds me of like those three button uh, control schemes they came up with for Genesis games. For those who didn't have the uh, six button controllers. We had to hold like the select button, not select button, the start button. In order to like toggle between punches and kicks. This game was incredibly hyped up for those of you who don't know. Again, this will be a future Hall of Fame inductee to be sure. And we'll get into more of the detail of it, but this game was, like, promoted to the moon. Mm. 
monkey. That's a cool looking monkey. Credit where credit's due. I think this game, uh, game has always been like this, even on 3D, I would have to compete against Samurai Showdown, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, don't forget Way of the Warrior, the best 3DO fighting game, which I considered playing instead of this one, but this one is slightly tangentially related to 3DO Doom, so it felt more appropriate. This is what they mean by the AI adapts to your moves, by the way. That It means that if you do the same move like twice in a row, it'll start auto-guarding against that move, and that just means you can switch to anything else, and chances are it'll connect. Lock this overhead. Ah. At least the muscles of the main character are well detailed. I mean, that butt. No, uh... Cyborg got a dumpy. Uh, was there a Sailor Moon fighting game in 3DO? Yes. Uh, pretty Soldier Sailor Moon S. I believe there is also one for Saturn. A different one. And there's one on SNES that are famously broken. That have an uh, infinite number of infinite combos in them. And so forth. Uh, that's one of those things, uh, Death Fart says, is one of those things like Lawnmower Man where 3D CGI was all more important than the content. I mean, that was the trend. I mean, like, FMV is more important than actual gameplay. In the case of, like, a Lodestar, Legend of Tully, to uh, Tully Bodine. Wow, I'm Tully Bodine. There you are. BadGameHallThing.com. Check it out. I promise my writing is better than my diction. Man, are we actually going to clear this whole stupid-ass game? I forget how many fights are in this. But uh, we're clearly doing a uh, pretty good job of it. This guy has slightly more health, though. Granted. And there's more bounce back for hitting him. But at the same time, we're uh, doing just fine. I can just do this. Like, who gives a fuck if I take damage, right? Alright, so sweep, kick. There we go. I really love the music in the background of this, by the way. Uh, really making the most of that Brian May soundtrack. Uh, the Death Ferrets. What are those things? Uh, no, uh, sorry, Ludicrous Full 79. I heard 2D gaming seemed to have been shunned more than ever during the fifth generation of consoles. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Uh, there was still plenty of dog shit collectathon platformers that were coming out. No shortage of those. You know, some of them were actually pretty good, too, of course. There was a few good platforms during that time. But yeah, there was definitely an emphasis on presentation. But the FMV fad was so short-lived that, like, to say that it, like, seriously detracted from the whole, like, genre in the industry or set it back at all is not necessarily true. Again, it was a fad. It came. It passed. And they got back to making... Just endless platformers that I don't care about personally. Okay, yes, we get it. That seems. Oh, this looks like an actual fighter. No data. Whoa, we're going into this one blind, man. I don't know if we're going to make it out the other side. There's no, we don't have enough uh, archival on this guy. Oh, his name is Military. Let's see the same strategy every other uh, person fell to. Oh, that's a neat trick. We'll try spinning. That's a cool move. Deuces, bitch. 
I have no suggestion for that list being Gravity Games Beat, Gravity Games Bike, Street for Dirt. Yes, don't worry. That is definitely on the list. Stories of it debuting straight to Bargain Bin. The publisher trying to release it without telling any of the major games news sites that they had. Oh, there's actually a chance I might die here. Ah, okay. He got around on me. See, they said his uh, weakness was a weak frame, but he uh, he's military. He's got those sweet moves. Oh. Howdy, folks. I don't know much about Twitch or what the raid is. I think that's where someone else comes into the channel and brings their views along with them. We're just playing uh, something really cool right now. We're just playing some Rise of the Robots, which is... As you can tell from this, one of the most compelling fighting games you'll find on the market. Ugh. <laughs> I was so close on that one. Oh, you know what? Let's cheat. I'm not above cheating on this channel. There we go. I've mastered it. Uh, for those of you joining us now, we were playing 3DO Doom earlier. We got up to the second episode. I'll be finishing up that experience in the near future. And since it took us an hour and a half, and I like to do two-hour streams, you're, you are coming at the tail end. But, uh... At the same time, you're, uh, catching some pretty enticing action here. Hello, Crispy. Uh... Um, what's up? Nothing much at all. I'll tell you that much. When, you're, when it comes time to play Rise of the Robots... Wait, hold on a second. Is, is this a loop already? Have we... I've forgotten about this game. We were playing this as, like, you know, because on 3DO and because Randy Scott, a uh, convicted pedophile, or not convicted, accused pedophile, in charge of a company by the name of Art Data Interactive, who published 3DO Doom, also put money into this game, had gone uh, full, bet fully on the 3DO as the console of the future. And uh, sure enough, he was right, and that's why we're all still playing 3DO Mark II today. So yeah, there is a connection between this game and 3DO Doom. And, uh, Randy Scott, what a guy, what, what a hero of the industry. Shame he is a child molester. The... Hey, that's just how the cookie crumbles in this game industry sometimes. Some things never change. It's, what is with dudes named Randy? You know, we got Pitchford. Got Randy Scott. Yeah, this is exciting, uh, on this loop. I'll tell you what, let's go to another 3DO game since we're clearly in the loop there. And since I'm clearly in a 3DO kind of mood. So, I mentioned another 3DO fighting game earlier. Oh, I just realized, I'm this... <laughs> I'm going to get copyright stricken the moment this game starts up. Set skill level. Adjust sounds. Eh, I hate to do that because I love White Zombie. But, uh... I also like not having to deal with fucking copyrights. Uh, Select characters. This is Way of the Warrior. This is Naughty Dog. A very, uh... Fledgling Naughty Dog, let's say. We have some really cool characters here. I know everyone would love to see Shaky Jake. But I think he's the first competitor you face off against. If you pick any other characters. Let's pick a lady. Uh, Crimson, the Bar Brawler. Or... Nika-chan, Nikki-chan, who styles kung fu and origin is China, but appears to be just the same actress as there, potentially. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Bad Randy sounds like she should be the next NFT fad. Ever heard, uh, Fat Randy by the, uh, band Voodoo Glow Skulls? Good song. Complete non sequitur. Oh, I see what happened here. It thinks there's a second player. That's cute. No, I'm I'm playing this alone. I'm playing this by myself. So let's rewind back to the title screen. Habits, choice, versus See this? Versus you have to mm, scroll through that shit. Nikki Chan. <laughs> okay. Now we will get into some combat. For the last time, warriors have competed from all over the planet for this, the last competition. Welcome, noble challenger. Prepare to find the way. And again, there's Shaky Jake. Greatest fighting game character ever. Let's see if I can get a single round in this game. 
fight. Well, that's a handy move. Bad news. Appears we've reached the stalemates. <laughs> oh, well. Shaky Jake wins. You can always do that. This feels so wrong without fucking Thunderkiss 65 playing in the background. I'll, I'll give you my best rendition of it. 1965! Yeah! There you go, that, that's the way the warrior experience. Get your head stomped on by a man named Shaky Dake with a pool cue. While being serenaded by the sweet voice of Rob Zombie. Cool, we got a total of uh, 10 skulls, whatever that's worth. Alright, we are cooking with fire. Uh, yes, my pro play. You fly like a wombat. I can't really argue with that. Tournament mode. Is there a skill mode? Let's give a uh, heavy advantage left. I don't know if that will actually apply to the tournament mode. Into names. There does not appear to be a difficulty select. Let's try a different guy. Let's try maybe Crimson. Maybe I'm more of a bar brawler, and that was the problem. So I'm just not like uh, equipped for ninjutsu. Round one, fight. Let's see if I can figure out how to do a throw. <laughs> It does not appear that the candy handicap does uh, much in the way of anything for me in this. <laughs> that just grabbed me out of nothing, why don't you? I got some sort of power up at least. I might actually have this guy in the ropes. Put him down. Crimson Glory wins. Sweet deal. Round two, fight. Uh, Kuroyesu. Uh, just mash DP, all we find. How about this? How's that strategy working out for me? Sweep the leg, Crimson. Uh, solid opinion. The only Rob Zongi songs I can remember are Dragula and Edge's old entrance music. Yeah. <laughs> There's a there's living dead girl, there's uh more human than human. Wait, no, it's white zombie. I, I do mix up Rob Zombie and White Zombie songs a lot, but uh ah. Round one fight. Uh Cull the Despoiler. Ah. Uh, forever may he rest in peace. Ah. I miss him, miss him, miss him. Feel good. Oh yeah, skull bonus. Nice suplex. Bad news. Feel good. I don't know what accent he's going for, but it's awesome. Glory wins. Round two, fight. Okay, let's try to do some other moves besides sweeping the leg. Trying some... Does she charge? Maybe not. No, it does not appear to be. Quarter circles? Oh, yeah. Alright, so quarter circle, that is taunt. Well, that is guard, more generally speaking. Oh, I see what... Okay. You throw the this to ignite, you the, get them soaked in gasoline. Except it seems to wear off pretty quick. I would like to set this guy on fire. That's clearly what this combo is supposed to be. Okay. Oh, it fades so quick! Come on, let me do a thing game. Am I gonna lose by timeout? Nope. Oh my god, it has to be like... They have to be jumping for the... There's an arc to the match? Round three, fight. 
gonna get this. I need to see what this looks like. Let's see if there's any... If I have any kick moves. No half circles. Yeah. Not very good, but I have to be honest with you. Feel good. He's really concerned if, if I'm feeling good or not from having my back broken repeatedly. Maybe he's trying to massage me. Maybe he's like you know, really trying to like help me out here, do me a solid. Trouble ended. No! I'm, I I whiffed the input. I gotta get this right. There we go! Crimson glory. Only have to rewind a little bit. But we got it. We got what we were looking for. Now we're coming up on two hours, but I'd like to see if I can, knowing what I know now, get through this game. Get through a, Round one, fight. a full tournament mode playthrough. Oh, I think she seems to have some sort of air move. Oh, I can do this. Oh, when in doubt. Uh, Fox looks like the IRS WWF wrestler. Yeah. Erwin R. Scheister. Round two, fight. Come on. One of these times you're not going to block. What is he standing on? What are we standing on? Oh, I see the perspective changes. There's like a element of like vertical with the steps. It was confusing to look at for a second. Bring it on. Wow, this guy's dicey. This guy does not want to get hit. Finisher. <laughs> does he have Morpheus glasses? Ask Video Game King. Well, every day, or every morning he wakes up and he decides, am I going to take the red tie or the blue tie? Take the red tie, you get someone to fight in a shitty tournament. Oh, he, there's, that's right, there's, there's power-ups in this and one of them is invisibility. I don't really know how uh, practical that is, but let's set you on fire again. I think it's been long enough that I can try to attempt it again. Death is near. Yeah. Oh, it's so difficult to get that input. Yeah. I really want to burn this dude. Is near. Let's... Oh my god, I need to step back? Big damage. There we go. Glory wins. I know, I know, I'm not very good at fighting games. That is a big Triple H spit right there, by the way. That is impressive, honestly. Oh, it's shaky. Let's see if I can knock him off the stage and end this level nice and early. No, there's actually platforms on the side there. <laughs> what a, a clever reference to uh, the crocodile hunter. That's a joke. I you know it's crocodile Lindy. I like to, I like to be funny on this channel sometimes. Ah, Shaky Jake died as he lived, uh, covered in fucking booze. <sighs> Fight. 
bone breaking. Bone breaking. I don't know if singing Dune and Fire necessarily bone breaking, as it were, announcer guy, but I, I do appreciate, you know, that you're you're trying to gas me up here. Skull bonus. I'm inching slowly towards him. Mystery potion? Well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> okay, well, I guess the mystery potion is a true mystery after all. I don't know about the, the practicality of that teleport if it, all it does is... If you can't just attack immediately after coming out of it. You have to wait for a full animation to play out. Wait, hold on. I don't want to lose my timeout. Now that's a knife. Time over. Shaky Jake. Wins. <laughs> it happened anyway. Round three, fight. Now that's a knife. That's all, folks. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I will take that. Hey, if it means I don't have to go through that entire fight, if it means they can just... Congratulations, you have come this far, but many fearsome competitors yet await. All right, thanks for the heads up. Uh, this is not guys guys that many boss. This is a regular player character, so... That wasn't like an indication of us crafting any significant milestone. As far as I can tell. I don't know how to feel about this. Oh wait, yes I do. Badly. Oh my god, this guy likes to throw. This guy plays like I would play, just spamming like one or two effective moves. You wanna fight? Hey. Hey. Crimson Glory wins. Uh, for a second I thought those dragons were wearing boxing gloves as Video Game King. Uh, I, if I recall correctly, I think you're fucking right. I think those basically are boxing gloves. I think when you fight against that guy, spoiler alert, you do fight against like the incarnation of that weird creature. I think he does straight up have, like, those orbs in his hand. Power up. These voiceovers are fucking rough, man. Dragon wins. Yeah, this one's due for an article someday, and I'll have to, uh... Address that in the same way I address Clay Fighter, 63 and a thirds, uh, just lovely cast of characters. Which is to say, I will briefly mention the fact that it's kind of racist, and I will get endless comments from fucking dudes on Kiwi Farms about how I'm a uh, virtue signaling cuck. Which is very fun and cool. There was... so... And that, that comes from a place of truth. There's absolutely comments that I've had to delete on the uh, Clay Fighter article. Then there's some I've kept up just because they're so embarrassing for the people who posted them. One of the one of the comments has uh, links back to oh, R.I.P. Uh, links back to like this dude's own gaming website, which is like the the epic win gamer or like the the not politically correct gamer, and it's just like one of the shittiest gaming blogs I've ever read. And he was just complaining about how I was virtue signaling in my, uh, by addressing the fact that there is a racist caricature of a Chinese man in the N64 game. Which I guess is off limits. I guess you're not allowed to address that stuff. I guess that's... Anyway, I think that's going to just about do it. Uh, I didn't feel like playing any more Way of the Warrior, per se. Uh, so, I'm not going to. <laughs> I will give myself, though... Just for old time's sake. Oh, I needed that.
I, uh, I did need that for the little bit of ego boost. Uh, that comes with it. Uh, thanks for joining yet again. This was another episode of Cast giving very little warning for a, for a stream and people showing up to it unexpectedly, uh, gratefully so. Uh, we definitely got up to episode 3 of Doom on 3DO and I guess we will definitely finish that uh, next time I stream. When will that be? Who knows? I like to keep people on their toes. But uh, if you do join in the future, look forward to that. Uh, coming to the website soon will be the Doom 3DO article with the whole history and it's built up to be an interesting one. Also coming soon to the site, Elf Bowling, the movie, the article, which I'm looking less forward to, will probably be less interesting on Friday and uh, contribution to Indie Pocalypse, the Indie Monthly magazine will be Jurassic Park Trespasser. And I don't know, keep stay tuned to Stop Skeletons from Fighting. There's some videos in the pipeline. Zebo, a couple other things I don't know if I'm allowed to mention by name yet. But hey, I keep busy, don't I? So even though it takes me a month to pump out a fucking article, just know that it's that's, that's a busy month. Every month. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Uh, and if we do more of these streams, then I can write off even more time. I can delay even further. Um, that'll be awesome for me, personally. If I can, like, get away with, like, a Mar article every three months, and people still think I'm being, like, frequent with the updates because I'm doing the streams, if that, like, illusion works on you people, then I will absolutely be happy to uphold that. Anyway. Bye!